Joining me in the studio is Siobhan Benita. Siobhan, thank you very much for joining Radio Jackie. First things first, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. My pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you very much for coming in. Um, firstly, we're going to talk obviously about your run to be London Mayor. You're looking for the Liberal Democrat candidacy. You, of course, yep. ran as an independent back in 2012. Yep. What did you learn from that experience? Um, it was actually one of the most um, enjoyable experiences um, that I've had professionally. Um, I learnt that there are wonderful people across this amazing capital city of ours. I learnt that there are a lot of voters out there who are looking for something a little bit different as well. And I guess for me, I learnt that there's unfinished business. You did say when you ran that you weren't keen for the mayor to be party political and that you didn't think it, it was opened as such a position. Why have you chosen the Lib Dems? To be honest, Brexit has changed everything for me. So I joined the Liberal Democrats on the morning of the EU referendum result. Um, and I firmly believe now that it's the moment for everybody who kind of wants to have a more sensible, moderate, honest kind of politics. It's the moment for us to all come together and collaborate because I genuinely believe that we have lots of people out there who are hugely frustrated by the way things have been going since that referendum. Um, but we're not coordinating properly. Um, and it wasn't just Brexit itself. I mean, I'm passionately um, pro-Remain. But actually, I think what this whole kind of political era has shown is how dysfunctional our two main parties are. That's the reason why I'm now very proud to be part of the Liberal Democrats. Now, of course, the election is in 2020. It's still a fair you know, while away. What are your priorities going to be for that election? Um, as ever, I mean, the mayor only has responsibility over certain areas, so the priorities kind of remain the same, you know, even though it's been eight years since I, since I ran before. Housing is still a massive issue for Londoners. There are still far too many people who are struggling because of the exorbitant rent prices. Um, so housing's a big issue. Crime, you know, the perception now of crime across London is massive. But actually, unfortunately, we have seen over 100 um, murders. Um, many of those are young people um, since the start of this year. So I'm fortunate enough in that I have just finished doing work on a cross-party commission on serious youth violence. So I think I can bring some ideas for how we actually tackle crime, maybe slightly differently to how some of the others, other candidates might be approaching that. So crime, transport. I mean, for people who, who listen to Jackie, for example, uh, like myself, if you travel in to the centre of London on a regular basis... Southwest Rail and those must be I've seen your tweets. The, yeah must be one of the most frustrating things and there are so many Londoners who are telling me that if they live in the outer boroughs in particular trains have become a real real issue for them so I think that's definitely going to be one of my priorities and then increasingly as well I think and this wasn't on the agenda so much when I ran before the environment you know mm. the quality of our air um, massive issue especially if you're bringing up young children in London people are telling me this is something that they really want to see more action on now of course violent crime something you mentioned is something that's kind of heavily talked when we refer to Sadiq Khan's first few years in office firstly how do you rate how Sadiq Khan has done uh, and secondly do you think he's done enough to tackle violent crime so I think Sadiq Khan is a fine mayor I think he started off really well um mm. uh, you know I'm not going to say negative things where credit should be given. However, I do feel over the past kind of months, there is a real sense that he hasn't been grasping some key issues as well as potentially he could have been. And tackling crime is certainly one of those. I was delighted to see yesterday that he announced a new initiative. So he announced this London-wide violence reduction unit. Mm. I have to say that's something that a lot of people, including myself, have been calling for for a long time. Um, what Sadiq is very good at, he's very good at doing those big announcements. And actually, people are starting to say, but we need to see action behind that. So I will give him the opportunity now to prove that what he announced yesterday on this violence reduction unit, mm. he is going to follow through on. But it requires massive change. If you're serious about what they call the public health approach to crime reduction, that includes a mayor who is going to facilitate collaboration across all of our boroughs in a way that, quite frankly, I haven't seen him do yet. So I think the devil will definitely be in the detail of that announcement. But like I say, great to see it's announced. It's been something we've been pushing for, but let's see what happens next. Mm. Going back to your Twitter, because I know I mentioned that you, yeah. you of course, tweet your uh, oh, no. annoyance at South Western Rail. What have I done? Rail. What have I done? <laughs> um, of course, the man known as God, yes. Gus O'Donnell, Sir, yes. Doc, Sir Gus O'Donnell, uh, tweeted kind of his support for you, essentially, for, yeah. this, for this election. I know he was very supportive last time you ran. I mean, what kind of, is that a, a good endorsement at this stage, would you say? Or do you, do you think he should be getting involved as kind of the ex-head of the civil service in something so political? Um, personally, I think it's a fantastic endorsement yeah, <laughs> for me. I mean, I, I worked with Gus, so I know 
how much Gus cares about these issues. I know how much um, he wants to see London be the best city that it possibly can be. I also know how helpful Gus can be purely from the experience that he brings. You know, he mm. has huge experience of how government works. Gus was very supportive of me last time that I ran. He's got some really good policy ideas as well. So I'm hugely hopeful that he <laughs> will um, roll his sleeves up a little bit and not just support me on Twitter, but actually um, do a bit more than that as well this time round. That's a message for you, Gus, <laughs> if you're listening. Absolutely. Again on your Twitter, and I'm not just going to yep. fix on your Twitter, obviously. You tweeted the other day that you had uh, you had so much in common with Sean Berry, who, of course, uh, a, I think she's seeking the candidacy for the Green yep. Party again. She's now the co-leader, and she's ran, I think it's twice before, for London Mayor. Yep. Would you say you're, you're a left-leaning candidate for Mayor? Um, do you know what? I honestly don't believe that those labels mean anything anymore. When I tweeted about Sean, um, what I mean there is we met to have a, a meeting around tackling serious youth violence. Mm. And both Sean and myself are very clear that the only way you are going to address this issue um, is to actually tackle the root causes of youth violence so yes you have to be hard on criminals yes you have to do the enforcement stuff yes we need more police on the streets but actually if you are not looking at why some of our young people end up where they end up if you're not looking at the poverty that they live in if you're not looking at the inequality that they're facing you're not looking at the trauma that they have from the day they are born a lot of these young people you are never going to solve that issue over a long period and that's where I think Sean and I have a lot in common and in issues like that, I really do believe that's where I go back to. I still have that kind of sense of there are lots of issues where party politics should not play a role. And actually, I'm quite happy um, if I were to be mayor to work with people who are like minded on lots of those issues. So it was a real pleasure to actually meet Sean yesterday. I've not mm. met her before face to face. Um, and I hope that we can continue having conversations in other areas. Obviously, I want to be quite a green candidate, so um, I'm sure there will be lots of things that I will have in common with Sean on, on that level as well. Brilliant. In the last election, 2016, obviously the Conservatives were involved, and Zach Goldsmith in particular, in allegations of a, of a racist campaign, and, and a lot of people called his, his campaign disgusting. Um, do you think the Conservatives can recover in London out of interest? It's interesting. I mean, I hope they do. I hope they run a much uh, uh, nicer, kinder, fairer campaign than they did before. I think Zach's campaign was appalling. and I think he paid the price for that. They don't have, to be honest, a kind of very strong shortlist this time. I mean, considering it is the Tory party, considering the, the names that they have put up in the past, it's quite a lacklustre shortlist. Mm. Um, I think that gives the Liberal Democrats a brilliant opportunity this time. Everything, the context this time, um, is really positive for the Lib Dems. So the Tories don't have a big name in the running. London is hugely Remain. Um, you look at the recent elections, the Lib Dems are the only people who really have increased their vote in local elections. They've got more seats than anybody else, uh, additions to the seats. I think there's a real opportunity this time round for us to be the challenger, the mm. key opposition. We don't, you know, Sadiq has done some good things, but he shouldn't have a coronation next time round. This has to be a contest. You, our country, we're already struggling from a government that doesn't have opposition. I don't want our mayoralty not to have opposition either. Now, in 2016 as well, the Lib Dems only received 4.6% of the vote. I think Sean Berry beaten quite comfortably for, for the Greens got 5.8%. What's a realistic ambition for the Lib Dems if you were to run, do you think, honestly? Do you think third or do you think second or, or do you think you could become the next Mayor of London if you were the Lib Dem candidate? Uh, listen, I said last time there is no point running if you don't think you can win. I said that as an independent. I believe that as a Lib Dem candidate as well. Um, if I get selected, I will fight this election to win this election. Um, but as I said a minute ago, the context is very interesting for the Liberal Democrats this time around. We are in tune with London voters in terms of Brexit. We are in tune with our um, kind of remain um, overall uh, direction of travel. Um, and the Tories are not fielding a strong candidate. Um, when people vote for the mayor, I think they vote for a person as much as they do a party. Mm. And I think there are a lot of people in London as well who have wanted to vote Liberal Democrat maybe, but they haven't seen the right person in the right po position at the right time. So I think it could be quite interesting for us. I would absolutely be saying, if not, we're in this to win it, which I would be if I were the candidate, we should certainly be looking to come in 
as the main challenge to mm. the mayor, definitely. Now, sorry to bring this up, but when you look at previous Lib Dem candidate Brian Paddock, he said in the 2012 election, when you actually drill down to what lies behind her policies, she's very flaky. He was, of course, referring to you and whether you should be invited to Hustings. I saw that you, you were on a panel with him and Sir Edward Davey recently. Uh, has he apologised for those comments and, and is he ready to support the Lib Dems this time around, do you think? Listen, the fact that we were on a panel together <laughs> shows that we have made up, definitely, um, and uh, Brian... Brian has been very supportive, especially in the work that I've been doing on youth violence. So um, I think we're aligned on that. Um, Listen, we were running against each other um, in 2012. So people (laughs) say all sorts of things when they're in an election. But as I say, we were on a panel together recently, very much in tune. So I would say we've definitely got past anything that happened (laughs) in 2012. Good to hear. Now, of course, you beat UKIP last time as you ran yep. uh, as an independent. How do you think they're going to fare in London this time around? Because, as you said, it's a very Remain-heavy city. Their leader, Gerard Batten, doesn't seem to have cut it with voters, I think it's fair to say. Uh, what do you think is the, the ambition yeah. for them? I think they'll be absolutely wiped out if they run in London. They, they do not stand for London. They're not in the spirit of London. They do not celebrate the diversity of this great city. Um, we've seen in the past that they've had really, really bad results in these kind of elections. A lot of talk, I think Nigel Farage has even kind of floated the idea of him running. I would say bring it on. He'll get humiliated yet again. You think so? I really do. Brilliant. Well, Siobhan Benita, thank you very much for coming into Chat to Radio Jackie. My pleasure. Thanks very much.